So in this screencast, we're going to look at sequential circuits, or a counter, and we're going to look how we can observe the behaviour of the counter as a function of time. So first, we need to build the counter. So for this, I'm just going to use one of the built-in counters. So I'll just, I'll just put the counter block in. Just to make it easy, I'm just going to use a 4-bit counter. So you can change the number of bits of the counter, but I'll just use a 4-bit counter. So you can see the maximum value in hex is F, so 15, 1, 1, 1. And the action on all flows wrap around. So when it counts up, it's going to count 0 to 15, and when it gets to 15, it's going to start back at 0 again. So I need to put a clock into this to drive the counter. So connect it up to the pins with the little triangle symbols. And I'm going to call this clock, or just CLK. Then this is the eight put part of the clock here, so I'll connect up an eight put. So this is four bits. So let's name that eight put. Oops, can't that's a reserve word. Eight. Oh, that's also one value. So now we've got the counter set up. So if I run this, so you can you can either tick once like I've done in the past, or so Control and T or Command and T on Mac. We can see we can manually clock the counter. Are we going to simulate? It can just do ticks enabled, and that will just turn on the counter. So we can see this is counting up now. So we can see the the hex value here, and then the binary value in this eight put port. And you can actually change the tick frequency. I'd suggest you just leave it at eight because it's well, it's visible. You can watch it. And once you start going to too high frequencies, logic logism can get a bit flaky. So it's better just to leave it at eight, and we can see it counting now. Well, yeah, so that's fair enough, but it doesn't really give us a. You know, we can't see the waveforms of the clock, so we can do. We can use this chronogram tool. So I'm just going to. Disable the ticks so or the counter stops, and I'll reset the simulation. So you pop, you might have seen before on the simulate menu is this chronogram menu. So we can use that to look at the clock waveforms. So before we can do that, though, we need to add in another clock because Logisim uses a separate clock to drive this simulation. So we need to call this one Sys Clock or SYS SYS CLK. So you don't need to connect that up; just put it up in the corner out right the way. Logisim just uses this for the simulation. So we can go to the simulate menu and then launch the chronogram. So this menu pops up. So the first thing we need to do is these have got the different inputs and outputs and clocks we can select. We need to add them to our simulation on the right. So the first thing we need to do is add sys clock. So that's a clock that the simulation uses. So add that on. We'll also add the clock. So so sys clock is a kind of simulated clock, and clock is a signal what's driving the counter, so we need to add that. And we'll also add the output, so I called that a value. And here we can add enable the time selection, so we'll select which clock to use for the for this one. But there's a bit there's a bug on the Mac GUI. So there is a drop down menu here. You can't really see it. On Mac, so just select that, select clock, and you can put the frequency. I'll just left, I'll just put it as ten hertz. So we start the chronogram. So now we can see our clock signal, and we can see our value. So if, by pressing this button here, so we can step on click. So we need to have to do two. So there's like a tick tock for each clock cycle, so we can tick through. So that's so the counter value started at zero, and then when the positive edge came in. You know, it, came, it incremented up to a 1. Again, the next positive edge. So we can see our waveforms. So we can see with the time base here. So each one of these marks is 0.2 seconds. Because that corresponds to you know, 10 hertz. The period is 0.1 seconds. So each positive edge comes every 0.1 seconds. So not, not 0.1, not 0.2, 0.3, 0.4 and so on. So you can keep clicking through and watching it. So we can see the value of the waveform incrementing, but this is not very useful. This is just a generic um, 
convention, if you will, for the drawing waveforms. So this is us saying this in this period here, we've got a particular value on that waveform. So you can't see the individual pulses. So we'll look how to sort that in a minute. So you can either tick through manually or you can just let it run. See by pressing the button there. So we can just see the clocks just ticking and the counters counting up. So I'll just pause it so it's counting up. When it gets to F, it just overflows and recycles, wraps around back to zero. As I said, we can't really see much detail in this waveform, so we'll we'll try and observe each individual bit and we'll do that using a splitter. So I'll, I'll put this splitter in, connect it up to the 8 put. So you could probably guess rather than having a 4 bit 8 put, we need to have 4 separate single bit 8 puts, one for each bit. So I'll put that in. I'll just copy and paste these so I've got 4 of them. And if I highlight all of these, put a label on these, so I'll call them all Q. And logic them automatically renumbers them. So we'll connect those up. We've got Q, Q1, Q2, and Q3. And let's rename this one to Q0. So now, again, I'll just reset the simulation so this resets back to zero. Launch the chronogram again. And now I'll add. I'll add these values on as well, so Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. So I'll start the chronogram now, and I'll tick through the... So now we can see the individual waveform. So this is a waveform we'd expect for a simple counter. So you can see the least significant bit is toggling every time. And we've got the next, for bit one, we've got two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones, and so on. So you can move the cursor with this um, move the red line across so for example I'll just put it here that's on 8 so this is the most significant bit so we can see that's a 1 so we've got 1 and this is a 0 0 0 so 1 0 0 0 is 8 and as the end same with 3 so you can just read up here so along that well in this along this time point we've got 0 0 1 1 or 3 so this by doing it this way, it enables us to see the individual waveforms. And I'll just show you as well, there's another tool you can use for looking at the values of counters. So we can see the value here in, um, in hexadecimal. You can also use what we call a 7 uh, seven with display. So we need to. So 7 seven with display is one of these things. You've probably seen them on various devices. So each each display is made up of seven segments. So each segment is essentially an LED. So when it displays a certain number, you have to dis, you know you have to figure out which segments need to come on. And it's just a combinational logic circuit. They're fairly easy to design. But there's one already built in here. So at the bottom, logic simulation is these BFH mega functions. So we put bin binary to BCD. So we need to select the number of data bits. So this is only four bits. So with four bits, we can go um, zero to 15. So we only need the units and tens in decimal. So binary coded decimal, it just splits up each digit in a um, binary number, sorry, in a decimal number. So with 15, it will actually split 15 up into a one. So obviously one in binary is zero, 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 one. And a five, so zero one zero one. So it's each digit in the decimal number is encoded in binary. So then the units are connected to obviously the one here and the tens connected to this one. So you if you increase the number of bits on this, so we put eight bits uh, you can start displaying numbers in the hundreds. So that can go up to two five five, so we need to have a hundreds as well. We just got over four bits. So I'll connect that up to the eight bit. And then for each one of these and we use a binary to BCD um, sorry BCD to seven segment uh, encoder as well so this this part essentially looks it'll get a binary number from this port and then figure out which LEDs need to be switched on in a seven segment display so I'll just connect up one of these 
And you can probably tell from the shape, then you can just drop the seven segment into one of those. So you're going to reset the simulation, that's gone to zero. Now, if we enable the ticks, this is counted up so we can see the binary pattern here. We've got the individual bits of the binary pattern, we've got the value in hexadecimal, and now we can also observe it. That's a decimal number here as well using this counter. And again, in the chronogram, it's lots of chronogram. Add your signals in, make sure you've got a sys clock, so that needs to be just left unconnected. Select your clock, and you enable time selection, select which clock to use. Start the chronogram, so you can see then the clock signal, and you can see how the bit changes. So it's very obvious by looking at this. The clock is running at that 10 hertz. So Q0 will be 5 hertz, Q1 uh, 2.5 hertz and so on. So you can see the kind of frequency dividing effect of the counter. So each one of these waveforms is half the frequency of the previous.